Have you ever felt like you're being watched? Have you ever felt like everyone is in on something? Everyone but you? Do you believe in fate or that you make your own choices in life? The opening of The Truman Show establishes that we are indeed watching someone else's life play out. What it doesn't divulge is that Truman himself isn't in on it. Not until a huge light falls from the sky and crashes onto the street in front of his house. His sense of confusion, followed by the radio DJ trying to cover it up, aircraft in trouble began shedding parts as it flew over Sea Haven just a few moments ago. Clues us in that Truman is perhaps not an actor like those we were introduced to in the opening segment. Pretty immediately in the film, we get a sense of the bright and cheerful world in which Truman lives. The houses are all perfectly separated with similarly pleasantly toned colors, proportions, and architectural elements. The yards are perfectly manicured. The street is a lovely brick pattern rather than the typical asphalt. Every house has a white picket fence. It doesn't get more perfect than that. We don't know about you, but what it gives us is a sense of unsettling perfection especially as the movie wears on. But here's what's particularly incredible about Truman's home of Seahaven Island. It's all real. Filming in the new urbanist community of Seaside, Florida, the stand-in for Truman's world of Seahaven, was a no-brainer. As a new urbanist community, it's perfectly tailored to look like a set. It's all real. Nothing here is fake. Nothing you see on this show is fake. It's merely controlled. In fact, it's so convincing that most of the people that we've spoken with about the film thought it was a set. The original treatment for the story by Andrew Nichol had more of a sci-fi tone and was set in New York City. After Peter Weir was brought on to direct, the film took a more lighthearted tone and introduced some humor to the circumstances. Somebody help me! I'm being spontaneous! After scouting locations yielded no ideal settings, it was decided that the film would be created on the sound stages at Universal Studios. But then came the discovery of Seaside, the brainchild of Robert S. Davis and architectural partners Dwayne e. Platter's Ibeck and Company. Only a few CG modifications were needed to make this already too good to be real community into the idyllic town of Seahaven Island. Because of its immaculately kept environment and rigorously mandated architecture, Weir and production designer Dennis Gassner were able to create a world for Truman that is set apart from the real world beyond. It's a lot like the idea of Plato's cave. We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. The picturesque surroundings allow for a completely orchestrated reality. It can be anywhere and any time. In fact, there isn't a clear notion of the time period in Sea Haven. Sure, there are cars that are new. They have fashion magazines like any modern newsstand. But sometimes the characters look like they've emerged from the early 1960s. All of the townspeople have a general pleasantness about them, something we're quite unfamiliar with these days. There's a sense of innocence and Americana, a nostalgia that captures bygone times without sacrificing technological advance. But back to new urbanism. What is it? New urbanism sprang to popularity in the 1980s in an effort to combat post-war sprawl, which encouraged class and race separation and created a reliance on the car. New urbanism is essentially a notion to get back to our roots, to recreate a small town sense of community. New urbanists advocate several key aspects in design and look at things very much like a theme park. There's the overall plan, go a little bit smaller, down to a specific area of the plan, like a neighborhood, for instance, go a bit smaller, down to maybe something like a block within the plan, and smaller, all the way down to the details of the buildings that collectively make up the whole. New urbanists meticulously consider all of these things when designing a community. One of the key aspects of new urbanism is walkability, in an effort to minimize the use of cars to get around. While Truman doesn't necessarily adhere to this, Seaside is planned in such a way that there is a small urban town center with shops, restaurants, and businesses. 
Various scales of residential development fan out around well-organized streets of varying scale. This creates a hierarchy where some streets are intended for higher traffic volumes, others not so much. As the community extends outward, the scales of the buildings grow smaller, almost as if crumbling back to the natural environment that surrounds Seaside. But in all of this, everything remains walkable. That town center is within everybody's reach. Design and architectural standards are strictly mandated and kept. Every city's building code has various typologies that have strict requirements. It's how they maintain appropriate scale so that you don't have a small building overtaken by the shadow of a larger building, larger traffic overtaking walkability, things like that. But communities like Seaside go much further. In addition to zoning specific lots for specific use, building sizes, heights, porch requirements, setbacks, driveway widths, etc., they go so far as to have very specific architectural regulations for each building. Fencing, column type, sizes of chimneys, all the way down to even more specific items, like colors. The bodies of buildings are intended to be very specific, lighter colors closer to the gulf and more saturated colors as we move away. This is very intentional, so that no attention is taken away from the natural environment. Everything should blend in some respect, or if not blend, at least not detract. In places like this, everything has to be submitted for approval. Anything considered too utilitarian or ugly is not permitted to be in plain sight. New urbanist communities aren't just about restrictions for the sake of restrictions. Everything is meant to promote a generally more pleasant and healthy lifestyle for the people living there. They push for sustainable transportation, infrastructure, and power sources. They push for diversity in people, diversity in scale and building typologies. Yes, there is a common style, but everything doesn't look exactly the same. It's very unlike a gated community in that sense, where the uniformity is confining and soul numbing. Truman's naivety is considerable enough that cameras which are placed in very obvious and apparent locations aren't even noticed by him. He's remained unaware for nearly 30 years that his every move is being watched the people are so invested that they only see through his lens. The cinematography even often places our view within the hidden cameras, making us co-conspirators in Truman's imprisonment. And yet, despite the artifice of the town he lives in, the falsehoods of the relationships he's cultivated, the whole illusion in which he's been trapped, Truman is the only person we see in the entire film who's actually living his life, while everyone else merely watches. Thanks for watching. Is there anything you'd like to add? Any films you'd like for us to cover? Leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our others. Give us a like, a subscribe, and follow Sinistructure on social media.